Well, good morning, everyone. Let's get our Bibles open to Hebrews chapter number 8, verse number 12, for promise number 249. And uh, this is a great follow-up to yesterday, uh, our recap from Sunday. And uh, as I said on Sunday, God is ready uh, to forgive our sins if we will confess them to him in, in true surrender and, and real genuine repentance. Uh, this isn't a promise that is a sin as much as you want to kind. Jesus paid for this opportunity with his own blood. And God knows the difference between genuine surrender and just covering our bases. I think a lot of believers today really haven't surrendered to the Lord. They just love the idea that they don't have to worry about the future. And so they cover their bases. God is so loving and that's all they've received from him is that he's loving. And so they take advantage of him, so to speak, and just take salvation as if you could just take something like that. And they just kind of throw it on a shelf in the back corner of their lives and live their lives for the things that they want to. I'm sure they're really good people, but, but the truth is, is that when we recognize our lost condition and our sin before the holiness of God, we humbly accept all of God's terms. And that's just not normal for Western civilization. We are used to options. We kind of feel entitled to have benefits and, and just certain amenities and everything that we say, everything that we do. And so it's really hard for us to, to, to accept God on his terms. In fact, we oftentimes try to renegotiate his terms to make sure that the things that we would prefer to do somehow are okay with him. And sometimes we convince ourselves of that. Uh, but the truth is, is that the kind, uh, when we really meet God face to face, when we really meet the God of the Bible, holy fear and the highest awe and respect should result. In fact, listen to the, the verse, verse number 12, chapter number 8 of Hebrews. It says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. He doesn't say, hey, for the, the, the casual observer, this is what I'll do. And he doesn't say that this is for the person who is just simply trying to make sure that at the end of living for themselves, they have a cushy place to live at the end of this life. Really what he's saying is for those who surrender to me, for those who will take on the terms of salvation, which is absolutely giving all of ourselves to him, all of our hopes, all of our dreams, all of our passions, all of the things that we think we have, all our material gains, and we give that all to him and say, God, what would you have me do? He says, I will be merciful. I won't remember your unrighteousness. I will give you a clean slate to have you live out your life for me, starting from scratch, starting over. If you ever wanted to do over, truly and genuinely, authentically put your trust and faith in Jesus, and he will reset the pages of your life for you to live in a way that is pleasing to him and ultimately more fulfilling to us. What a powerful, powerful opportunity that we have to even know Jesus, let alone to be given the opportunity to reset our lives, to bring honor and glory to him. Too many who claim to know God are pretty quick to excuse their lack of commitment, their unwillingness uh, to yield to God's authority as mere suggestions, or if maybe God is just giving us some alternative options. And listen, this promise is for those who understand the true destructiveness of sin and what we observe or deserve because of it. Think about it. We deserve to be lost in hell for all eternity, but God is saying, hey, look, if, you'll, if you will repent of your ways and, and receive my gift of salvation, that is a, is a, is a total trade, not a partial trade, not an not a add-on to me because I'm pretty, pretty set already, but I just don't want to go to hell. Uh, it's nothing like that. It is absolutely recognizing the authority of God surrendering everything that we have to hit for his honor and for his glory. And we align all of our purposes so that everything that he wants, everything that he commands, everything that brings uh, joy to his heart fits into our lives. And then we ask him with whatever's left over, can I put this in? Can I pursue this with what remains? That's the way we should approach God if we have actually authentically met him face to face. Let that be an encouragement to you. This is what we're striving for. Less of me, more of him. We want to be less who we used to be so we could be more of who he saved us to be. Hope that helps. Enjoy a wonderful day.